Hello everyone, welcome again to Zoom Minor TV. Today we're going to do work on some of the next steps after you've done your basic first install. Things like adding cameras. So to start with, the most simple case uh, would be a network camera. And without getting into auto detection and envif and all that stuff, let's say you, you know where your camera is on the network and you know the model and you've looked up the URL. This is, this is about as simple as it gets. Most of these we can leave at their at their defaults for the purpose of, of this. We're going to go to the source and cut and paste in our URL. And we have to set the size. Um, you can set it wrong and ZoneMinder will scale it, but that's going to use more CPU and potentially more RAM if you were to specify something larger. Uh, so it's really best to get it right to know ahead of time. So go into the camera settings, figure out you know what it should be. In this case, this camera is a 720p. It's a Vivotech camera actually. So let's just go ahead and save that. That should be all that's required as a basic first step. And I just keep refreshing. Eventually, it starts up. As you can see, this is sitting on my desk while I record. So that's the beginning, that's basics. Uh, now right off the bat we see we got some issues here, the timestamp, the camera does its own timestamping. And generally that is preferred. Uh, you know, if you were dealing with a, a, an analog camera or webcam that doesn't automatically add that, then you have to have ZoneMinder add it. Uh, so let's get rid of that. So we'll go back in. So we go down to the timestamp, and this is the format string for it. Um, monitor name, day, month, year, hour, minute, second. We don't want any of them, so we're just going to clear it. Um, other things to know, you can insert multi-lines. Um, you can also use this um, to put other data onto the camera stream if you want. Um, if you're triggering using remote sensors, anything like that you can insert that text onto it. It doesn't have to just be the date. X and Y, we're going to leave it at the top. Uh, now one thing is about the size. I mean, this is, you know, it has to be relative to the resolution of your video stream. If it's, you know, a, an old analog webcam, it might be 640 by 480. Small is going to be what you want. 720p, I think default would probably be a decent option. Perhaps I should have put this back. Okay. Anyway, trust me on this default. And now this matters because if there's a break in the stream or something, uh, for some reason it, it isn't capturing and you're trying to view it, it'll give you error messages up on screen and it'll put that text in some in this default font. It'll say, oh, I can't stream for the following reasons. Uh, so it's important that they set the font size to something useful. So let's go back and check how we're doing there. Take a minute, a second for this to uh, camera to start back up. There we go. There we go. This is just the timestamp left put in by the actual camera itself. Ours is gone, so that's good. Uh, as you see, this is defaulted to what we call MoCord, so which it's recording all the time. You can see, they have events over here in our columns, but it's also doing motion detection. So here we have analysis enabled. Analysis means motion detection. Um, so what's going to happen is when it detects motion, it'll stop the previous recording and start the new one. Uh, that it, you can control that behavior as well. Uh, but we'll get into that maybe in another video. Uh, other things we might want to do this. How we store the video is very important. The default is the old way, which is you're storing a billion JPEGs. Every single frame of video is stored as a JPEG. And in this case, also an image with the motion detection. Whatever it's detected, it'll be outlined in the uh, image. This is kind of fine, but it um, takes up a lot of space. And a lot of file systems have to fall apart because it'll put a billion images in a directory. And it's, it's the old way of doing things. So what we really want to do, the most efficient, is what we call camera pass-through. What that does is it takes the 
H.264 packets and sticks them into a file and that is it. You can also store the JPEGs. Uh, often what I do is just do the analysis image and pass through. Um, don't really need to worry about this. It's actually best to clear. This will actually log something if you leave that in there because it's not relevant to pass through. So let's give that a shot. So here we go. Now we know that these two were stored with the JPEG. So let's take a look at what that looks like. You see down here, um, these red bars indicate when motion happened. So there's not much happening, not much happening. Our, obviously our motion detection is not very sensitive because it's missing stuff. So what can we do about that? Well, we can edit the zone and we can make it more sensitive. Now this is a common problem and as something as developers we should really fix. Uh, the default settings for zones are not sensitive enough. Um, they're designed for back in the day when the camera resolution was 640 by 480. Uh, now the cameras are 720p, 1080p, 4K, etc. They're just not sensitive enough. So this is what you sh I recommend you do right off the bat. What we're going to do is make it incredibly more sensitive. So I switched to pixels instead of percent. And the reason I did that is because um, if I left that in percent, I'd have to type in 0.001%. See if I go back to percent 0.11, it's not as intuitive. To do nice round uh, low numbers, start at a thousand for each of these, and then if it's too sensitive, you can add, go up to two thousand or three thousand, and if it's not sensitive enough, drop it down. I have some cameras where it's more like three hundred. So we can watch this, and we see we can watch this. Uh, you can test it right here. So. It's recording, it's basically idle, it's not detecting motion. Um, and then I can wave my fingers in front. Alarm. See, it detected that. It's much more sensitive. Back into alert. Let's see if it'll pick up the mouse movements. Right. So that's probably about right for that. So now that we're recording, um, events. Let's go check. Uh, so before I showed you what the viewer looked like when we were storing as individual JPEGs and we switched it over to uh, the camera pass-through. So let's see what that might look like. Uh, so right off the bat I'm looking here at disk sizes. It's going to actually take in considerably more space. However, the actual number of frames is considerably larger, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. And this is what the interface would look like when using pass-through, because we're using the built-in HTML5 uh, viewer to play it. Uh, we have a slightly different UI around it. Not terribly different, but a little bit. As well as the usual buttons, it all sort of integrates together. So you can switch the rate either here or down here. Again, the little red motion indicators are a little different, but basically the same, overlaying on here. Okay, um, if you were recording something like H.265, most browsers cannot play H.265. And so this wouldn't work. You would get, uh, it would be a blank screen, you might just get audio. It would not be very good. So one thing that you can do in that instance, I'm, I'm working on a JavaScript-based H.265 player in, in development, but it's going to be a little while before that's available. But you can come here and you can say, instead of playing the MP4, which is failing because it's got H.265 in it, you can say MJPEG. And see, we're back to the JPEG viewer, but it's streaming from the MP4, converting it to JPEG, and sending it to us. Other things we can do here, we've got lots of buttons here at the top, 
I so explain it back as a and refresher as you'd expect. And rename. By default, I mean there's a thing you can change this, but if you wanted to give it a name like, oh hey, this is what happened, and, and you know give this something meaningful, you can do that. Archive. What archiving does is really it just marks it in the database, but Zomind will not delete an archived event. Uh, you can, you know, the buttons will be grayed out, you know, whatever it is, it will not delete it. Um, and so if, if something of interest and you're concerned about getting deleted, you set it to archived. Yeah, let's archive this one. Now you see I, I can't I can click on it, it's grayed out, nothing happens. Uh, unarchive obviously does the reverse of that. Edit, you can change what caused it, you can add any notes you want. Export, now the next one is download, and you might be thinking what's what's going on, what's the difference? Um, download is just that mp4 video file, but ZoneMinder is storing all kinds of other data with this, this event, it's the thumbnails, individual image frames, um, any, any other data that happens to go along with it, each event gets a folder and everything goes in there. And so if you want to download just the video, which, you know, if you're giving this to a police officer or something, maybe, or, that might be all you're interested in. Or do I have, I don't have anything installed yet. We'll do that in another video. Whereas export, apparently does nothing. Well, I'll be filing myself a bug report on that. Come back to that later in another video. Generate video. This is if um, if you were only storing JPEGs and you weren't saving it as an MP4, um, or if you wanted to change that video in some way. Uh, this is a little user interface that would allow you to generate that from those JPEGs. I don't think it's terrible. It used to be a lot more useful than, than it is today. Uh, now this is frames. This is where you can view the individual frames of the video. You can see it just generate them all here. These red ones are where it detected motion. So we can go into that. And by default, if, if the analysis image exists, it'll default to showing it. Uh, otherwise it won't. And this red box around it means that it is the analysis image. And the motion that it detected is outlined. You see the squiggly line right here? That's what it detected out of everything else that was going on, on the screen, and that triggered motion. And you've got some stats over here. Uh, you know How many pixels were different? How many alarmed? How many filtered? How many blobs? Well, there's a big blob right here. Let's go one. And you can go next through them. So that's a little tour of viewing events. And as you can see, we've got hour, day, week, month, and archive. You see, we archive one. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna think that concludes this video, and I'll try to make another one uh, detailing uh, adding a local camera. So I'll sign off for now. If you like this video, subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate to support us, uh, go to zoneminer.com/donate. And I'll see you again in the next video, hopefully soon. Bye-bye.